I want to start with congratulations on making your first feature. Um, I know you've been in the DGA for, I think, over 20 years. And um, so, it, you know, it, it happened really quick. Yeah, you know how it goes, bro. You stand in line long enough, they'll notice you, I guess. <laughs> you've worked as a stunt coordinator. You've done so much in the industry. Um, how many, I guess, can you talk a little bit about some of the things you've learned along the way or seen directors do that you sort of have been like writing down to make sure happened on your movie? Anything you see or do in your life will influence you. You can't see something and not influence you. You can't. It's just impossible once you've seen it or been a part of it. And I would tell you, I have equally learned from the masters that I've got to work with, um, you know, some of the amazing directors. I've learned equally as much from the directors that were first and second time directors. Sometimes it's what not to do. Sometimes it's what to do. Um, I, I, my whole mantra for the action in my movie was not to do anything that I'd done before. Or if I did something I did before to, to spin it. We shot the movie in 42 days with no second unit in the middle of a pandemic. So it was, it was a big, it was, it was a big appetite with not a lot of time. So we had to run and gun. I used a second unit mentality to the pacing of how I shot. Three cameras averaging 50 to 60 setups a, a day. But when it comes to the comedy, it's not like action. You can't rush comedy. Like I beat the action. I, I, I whipped the action. With the comedy, you have to let that happen. You have to be there and be present and give them a, an opportunity to succeed. So I learned something very important from Paul Feig on a movie called Spy that I worked on years ago, where he would keep it rolling. And he had these uh, accordion of post-it notes with uh, alts that he would write down. And when you have someone like Jamie Foxx and Dave Franco, who are directors as well, um, throw in the heat, the comedy heat. A lot of times, all I have to do is, is just get out of their way, say action, you know, and then, okay, one more time, a little more energy, keep it moving. So I, I would say Paul Feig had a lot of um, influence on, he was pretty, pretty much the only comedy, that's the only comedy I think I worked on. I worked on a lot of comedies, but they weren't meant to be comedies. But right. that was the only comedy I worked on was supposed to be a comedy. But I learned because I really paid attention to what he did. And then, um, you know, I, because I came up with Chad Stahelski and I helped him with Wick 1 and Wick 2, I was there with him when he was going through that. You know, I watched some of the things that worked for him as well. I like to use three cameras always. And in car chases, I'll use seven or eight. But when I'm shooting dialogue and action, I'll use three. Sometimes too many cameras, you get in your own way. You know, sometimes not enough cameras, it takes too long. So... You know, there was something I picked up from everyone. Like uh, you, you can't, like I said, you can't do something in your life and it not influence you, whether it be a good influence or bad influence, or you don't use it or do use it, but it's ingrained in you because you've seen it. I love the opening fight between Jamie and the grandmother vampire. Uh, it's excellent. Um, can you sort of talk about uh, filming that sequence? And because, um, you know, it's very practical. This isn't some CGI thing. No, we, we did everything in camera. When I learned this business was in 1990 when I got out of the army, you couldn't just say, we'll fix it in post. And a lot of the movies I work on as a second unit director, I pass on movies that are blue screen movies. I prefer to be out there like Fast and Furious. We're out there wrecking 300 cars, locking up Edinburgh, Scotland, flying, jumping off a bridge. We're doing it. I love that. That's what I signed up for. That's the business I learned how to do. And it's a dying art. Um, but that fight in particular... So, you know, the grandma, uh, Audrey's daughter, there was an actress that played the character. There was a stunt double that we put on, that we wrecked through things. There was a fight double for all the intricate fight work. Then there was a contortionist double. So there were four different players in that sequence for them. That set was built by my production designer based on a previs that I had done before. So one of the things that I did was I... I galvanize all my departments because a lot of times when you're making movies, you have 25 departments and they're all doing the same movie, but they're all off doing their own thing. So there's a little, you lose a little bit from everyone because of lack of communication. I knocked that wall down and I made sure we all, my vision was that one of the big mistakes that I want, that I see young directors make is they don't share their vision. Like they know what they want, but they don't explain it well enough. Like you have to almost over explain it. So everyone has, and use visuals. I got all my department heads all in on that. And all the reactionary work, whenever the, you saw the, the, the grandma folded up, 
You can't smash a contortionist in that position. You'll break them. We put them in that position, and then we pulled them out on a wire and played it in reverse uh, with yeah. a magic frame rate that I cannot disclose unless you send me a check for $10,000. But that was part of the, you know, the old school filmmaking process that I learned. I didn't invent contortionists. I didn't invent reverse photography, but I did help. I, I felt like we brought in weaponizing and reactionizing. The contortion work was fresh and new. I felt like it's very visceral when people see a woman getting wadded up in half like that, especially an older woman, everybody cringes. And that's exactly what I was hoping the audience would do. I mean, you mentioned Chad and uh, he's a producer on the movie. Um, there is an element to the film that it's like, it's, it's, there's a, I don't want to say it's John Wick with vampires, but there's a John Wick-esque thing to it with the, with the union and the vamp, like, you know what I mean? Can you sort of talk about that aspect? Cause it, it it's not just, um, there's a richer world, if you will. Understood. So what I got, what I was getting, after John Wick 2, I was getting a lot of scripts, like I said. When I got Day Shift, it spoke to me because I understood the world that hides in plain sight from John Wick. It really works. I love the idea of that I go through that door and there's a bunch of secret agents in there throwing knives. Then I go out that door and there's people repelling. Then I go out that door, it's the lobby, don't tell them. Like, I think that's cool. What you don't see, the things that can hide in plain sight. With Day Shift, why I loved it so much is you have the union of hunters, and then you had the vampires. So you had two worlds that hide in plain sight. And the vampires, which can elevate it. When, when, when you're dealing with humans, you're bound by gravity and humanness. As soon as you introduce vampires, you can go reality plus 80%, and it, it's totally viable. So that's why I really leaned into that. And I was hoping no one would hope would think it was John Wick with vampires because I wanted it to be a different kind of funny, like Lost Boys or or Fright Night or Big Trouble Little China. Those are the movies that I really, really loved. I wanted the action to be super fun and cool, sometimes cruel, but most of the time cool. And uh, I was really counting on the, 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 the suspense elements to keep people, you know, in their seats, shifty in their seats. So, you know, I, I'm just super grateful that I got to do it and, and, and work with all these gems. It was, a, it, was a real, it was a real career highlight for me. Yeah, by the way, it's not John Wick with vampires. I'm just saying that th that... That one aspect of like the the richer world, you know what I mean? One hundred percent right. You you saw it exactly, and that's what that's what spoke to me because I needed something like that, but I didn't want to copy because I got like, hey, do another John Wick thing. We'll get uh, this guy, and we'll you know we'll make this guy the next John Wick. I'm like, yeah, but we already did that. We already did gun jitsu. We already invented gun jitsu. We can't do that again. We got to find something else, and that's why I was looking. And as soon as Day Shift showed up, it really spoke to me. Uh, I really hope it's a huge hit for you, and um, I wish you nothing but the best. Dude, thank you so much, bro. I appreciate you. I'm glad you liked it, man. I really am.